Closer, child. Come closer. I won't hurt you. She beckoned the little girl with a long, bony finger. Greta looked back at her brother as if to ask him for help. Hans looked nervously between his sister's eyes and the old lady. She stepped closer now and asked again, Now child, you look hungry. Come inside. Let me put some meat on those bones. It's the least I can do since you helped an old lady. In her other hand, she produced a velvet cupcake. The aroma was too much for Hans. Any worries he had soon disappeared. He pushed Greta in the back and nodded his head towards the little house in the forest. She could see the look on his face. He was nothing if not stubborn and untrusting. However, the mere hint of something sweet was his Achilles heel. The old lady strode off towards the back of the house, seemingly towards the kitchen. For such a hobbled over old woman, she moved with surprising agility and speed. Hans and Greta surveyed the house cautiously, nothing too odd from a first glance. The usual old person things you'd expect to see. A stuffed black cat by the fireplace, an old fashioned broom hanging above the entranceway, a picture of some hippie gathering in the forest. Greta pointed the last one and tugged Hans's shirt. They both giggled to themselves. The old lady promptly came back to the living room. In her hands was a baking tray filled with the most delicious pastries, buns and sweets either of the children had ever seen. The aroma of fresh bread and sticky sweet sugary goodness wafted through the air. Somewhere, deep inside that heavenly scent, Greta thought she smelled something else. Something rotten, something putrid. She sniffed the air, but it was gone. Perhaps it was some rotting food, or just her imagination. Hans pulled out the glass bottles the old lady had asked for. As he offered them to her, she looked at him with a slightly confused look upon her face. Oh, of course, the glass bottles I asked for. Thank you, dearie. Just set them on the table and have a bite of this. She pushed a particularly delectable looking pastry towards him. Hans didn't need to be asked twice. He grabbed it greedily and scarfed it down, practically eating the old lady's fingers with it. But Greta wasn't so easily fooled. Forgotten the glass bottles? That was the whole reason they had made their way through the forest to her little house. How could she have forgotten? The old lady came towards her, offering her sweets and buns. Now try this one. I made it especially for you. Greta hesitated. Especially for me? They had found the old lady hours ago, stumbling through the forest, seemingly lost and confused. She had seemed so helpless and tired. What would her parents have said if they had just left her there? So they had helped her back to her home and were just about to leave when she had invited them in. Hans wasn't having any of it though. He had lost an hour of daylight helping the old lady and wasn't about to get stuck inside a musty old house, drinking tea and hearing about old people stuff. As they made their polite excuses and turned to walk away, she called back. Do you, perchance, have any glass bottles at home? An odd question, perhaps, but the hand thought much of it. If you bring them to me, I'll pay you ten times what they were to recycle. That greedy guts Hans had agreed instantly and taken off at a run. By the time they had returned, the sun was starting at slow decline and the children were getting hungry. The old lady's delectable treats were hard to pass up. Now try this one. I made it especially for you. Greta stood up. So quickly the old lady jumped back. I'm sorry ma'am, but could I use your bathroom? Oh, I guess, of course. And call me Miss Totenkinder, won't you? Down the hall, on the left. Don't go into the kitchen. I have a meal cooking, and I don't think its smell will agree with you. Greta politely nodded. Miss Totenkinder? What an odd sounding name. As she approached the bathroom, she smelt the same pungent odor from before. She had smelt it before. It was like chicken, but not. She glanced back and saw Hans, greedily being force fed buns and muffins and rolls. A quick peek, she had never noticed. As she walked into the kitchen, she saw an enormous black pot on the stove. Beneath it, the fire burnt and the cauldron bubbled. On a cutting board was ginger, seeds, and some sort of root. Next to it, what looked like a snakeskin and leeches. As she approached the pot, the pungent smell came to her again. She peered over the pot. Chicken, not chicken meat, but whole chicken fetuses bubbled to the top of the water. Oh dear, oh dear, this wasn't meant for you, child. 
the old lady blew something around her head, and everything went suddenly black. Greta woke up. Her eyes were still heavy, and her senses very foggy. She looked up and attempted to focus her eyes. She was in some sort of pantry. There were shelves with canned food and bags of flour and other items. That old witch! She had knocked her out with some sort of dust or chemical and locked her up in here. She tried to get to her feet, but found her ankles and hands were bound in twine. What about Hans? Where was he? Was he okay? Something dripped on her forehead, towards her eyes. What was that? Was the roof leaking? Had one of the cans been punctured above her? As she turned her gaze upwards, she saw Hans, hanging by his neck, above her. She turned away from him and scooted across the floor away from his dead body. She tried to scream, but the gag in her mouth wouldn't let her. As she caught her breath, she looked up once again. What had happened to him? He looked emaciated and exsanguinated. What had that raw old witch done to him? She closed her eyes and cried. She would be next. She cried for an eternity, and when she couldn't cry anymore, she slept. She didn't know how she could, with her brother's body mere feet from her, but the pain and loss had exhausted her. Without hope, sleep comes easy, she thought to herself. No, she wouldn't get away with this. Think, Greta, think. Surely there's a way out of here. You deserve it to your brother to bury his body. Think. As she contemplated her situation, she slowly started to piece together what had and was still happening. It had been six months ago when the last child had disappeared. At first, it had been put down to either the sinkholes, which were occurring more commonly in the area, or becoming lost and disoriented in the forest. It had happened before, but not with the frequency of late. Rumors had spread of a cult or black magic being conducted in the forest at night. Satan worshippers, or cultists, conducting their dark arts. The police had of course ignored it and laughed. It was pure conjecture. There were no Satan worshippers, witches, or ghosts and goblins in the forest. Just unfortunate accidents. But it had continued. A few more disappeared, and then a few more after that. The townspeople had insisted they look deeper into what was happening. There were a group of cultists in the town, stealing children and sacrificing them. With the pressure increasing, the police opened the file and investigated the disappearances deep in the forest. What came to light had shocked the town. No, it wasn't cultists or sane worshippers. In fact, it seemed like the small midwestern town had a serial killer. It wasn't long after that they made an arrest. Bill Jameson, the son of the local mechanic was found with pictures of some of the missing children in his bedroom. That was enough for the police. They had their scapegoat. But the townsfolk continued. Impossible, they had said. This was the work of a group of people. Satan worshippers. One skinny, stupid boy couldn't have done this. But the police had had enough. Case closed. And as if their wish was a command, the disappearances had stopped. It had never been Billy Jameson. It had been this Miss Totenkinder, or whatever her name was. She had come to the town shortly before the first disappearance. She pretended to be old, senile and weak, but Greta had firsthand seen her strength and agility. She moved and reacted like a person half her age. Billy Jameson might not have had the cunning and strength to commit these murders, but Miss Totenkinder certainly did. She didn't need a coven or a cult, she could do it all herself. She had to find a way out. She scoured the small room, looking for any tool of escape and opening to squeeze through. Nothing. There had been a reason why she had locked her up in the pantry. The door opened. The old lady looked upon the boy's dead body with a smile. Ah, he would make a fine elixir indeed. Once her potion was mixed up and his blood and fluids added, she would have enough to last another five years without needing to hunt again. This small town was quite nice, and she could see herself staying for a while. At least, until the current generation of children were long dead and buried, and their children's children were grown. Only then might she move on. After all, when you're 800 years old, life takes on a more leisurely pace. She looked down to where the little girl had been. Gone! Where was she? Impossible! There was no way out! Her eyes searched the small room. Nothing! She stepped into the room and pushed the door closed. What was this? The lock. Scratch marks all over it. Had she? Had she picked the lock? No. She had to catch her before she alerted the police. She flung the door open and ran out of the kitchen. In the distance, Greta heard the front door slam shut. She slowly let her legs down and pushed aside her brother's lifeless corpse. You saved me one more time, Hans. 
I'll be back soon. She gently massaged her ankles and wrists, which were covered in blood. Her brother's blood, just enough to slide the ropes off. She listened for a moment. Nothing. She took off at a run, back to the town, to the police, to her parents. The police had arrested her that night, in the forest. She had been sitting by a large bonfire, smiling at them sweetly. She hadn't resisted and in fact had been extremely agreeable. A few of the men had questioned whether such an old, sweet lady like this could possibly have killed the kids. Even if she had planned to, did she really have the strength? Greta had cried and screamed. It was her, Miss Totenkind. But the old lady had politely said, Oh my dear, I think you have me mixed up with someone else. My name is Beatrice, Beatrice Widow, as they took her away. As they left the fire, Greta looked back, seemingly to put this whole thing behind her. Curious. It was a very large fire for one old lady. And the floor, it looked like there had been more people here at some point. She shrugged. Sane worshippers, right? Cultists? A single person couldn't do this, huh? How wrong they had all been. SCP-545-A appears to be an elderly woman, presumably of Eastern European descent. 1.5 meters in height and 73.9 kilos in weight, giving her a short, plump build. Her skin, although deeply tanned and heavily lined, is devoid of blemishes or liver spots otherwise common with age. Despite appearing to be 80 plus years old, 545-A is in exceptional health with no weakening of the heart, bones or respiratory system. And although of average human strength, her senses are noted to be above average, and she scores a general 115 on a standard IQ test. SCP-545-A claims to be over 800 years old. This claim has yet to be disproved. Despite SCP-545-A's penchant for acting like a kindly old woman, she displays no remorse for her use of SCP-545-B or C. SCP-545-B is a colorless, odorless liquid extracted from the body via 545-C and bottled. It is often dubbed liquid life due to its properties. Drinking SCP-545-B extends the life of the user, slowing the process of aging and often either slowing or completely ridding the body of disease. It may even be used to heal major wounds if drunk quickly enough. Repeated use of SCP-545-B may prolong life indefinitely, but results in a strong dependency upon its properties and many frequent users show borderline sociopathic tendencies in regard to the creation of SCP-545-B. SCP-545-C is a thin, weathered sheet of yellow parchment, in surprisingly good condition. Carbon dating places it to be at least 600 years old. SCP-545-A claims to have copied SCP-545-C from the original document containing SCP-545-C's instructions. For lack of a better term, SCP-545-C contains a recipe in Middle English for extracting and distilling SCP-545-B from the human body. The next time you're walking in the woods and see an old lady in distress, be sure to keep your wits about you. It might not just be your help she's after. As always, have a care, and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.